Thank you so much for joining me today for this practice. My name is Christine, and we are practicing live with the group from Breast Friends here in Tigard, Oregon. There is information about that organization in the comments below, so feel free to reach out if you want any more information about that group. We are going to start standing today, and as I am nursing a sciatica flare-up, there will be no forward folds in this class, and it will be kind of geared toward easing any low back or sciatica pain, so this might be a good practice to come back to if that's something that you're dealing with. I am teaching from home today, and they, it is garbage day in my neighborhood, so if you're hearing any sounds please just disregard them as part of your yoga practice. Um, that is one of the goals in yoga is to just find equanimity within ourselves, regardless of what is going on in the outside world. All that being said, let's go ahead and come to stand at the front of the mat and maybe just rock back and forth a little bit on your feet and really feel the ground underneath your feet. Rock forward onto your toes, onto the balls of your feet, and maybe rock back onto the heels. You might even go a little side to side and really feel yourself grounded and connected. And once you've felt that out a little bit, see if you can come to a place where you feel centered, where your head is over your heart, your heart is over your pelvis, your pelvis is over your knees, your knees are over your ankles. You might just shake out your arms a little bit to relax your shoulders. And if you're comfortable closing your eyes, you'll even challenge your balance here a little bit. And then notice the next inhale as it enters your nose. And let that in-breath be an invitation to you to be fully present in your body. And as you exhale, see if you can soften your shoulders away from your ears. Let your next inhale draw the crown of your head up towards the sky, maybe lifting your heart a little bit. And exhale, keep that little lift, but again, soften the shoulders down. And let's be here in the breath for just a few more cycles. And see if you can encourage your breath to come a little bit deeper down into your low belly, your pelvis. Feel the breath expanding all the way around into the side body, into the low back. You might even take one hand to your low belly and the back of your hand to your low back. And as you inhale, see if you can feel that expansion from front to back. And let everything soften as you exhale. Let's find three more breaths right here, really drawing the breath deep into the body. Continuing to be mindful of your feet on the ground. One more inhale here, settling into your practice, giving yourself as much of yourself as you can as a gift. And with your next exhale, release your hands. And we're simply gonna go from side to side. So you might wanna keep your hands down, inhaling here at the center, and then exhale to just reach your right fingertips down towards your right ankle, getting a little length in the left side of the body. Inhale back to center. 
and then exhale, reaching your left fingertips down towards the left ankle. And we're just gonna go from side to side here, moving at your pace with your breath, letting the inhale take the whole time of coming back to center, and the exhale take the whole time of going side to side. If it's comfortable for you, you might wanna reach the arms up towards the sky, inhale here, exhale, bringing those right fingertips down towards the right, and then inhaling both arms back to center and exhaling left fingertips down towards the left. So just raise the arms as much as feels good to you. We're not pressing or forcing anything. We're just opening up the side body, making space in the vertebra for all those little discs to have that synovial fluid running through them, keeping our spines healthy. One more time over to the left. And then we'll inhale back to center, arms up or down. Exhale, sit down and back as if you're sitting on a chair. Feel your weight down into your heels. You can keep your arms extended or maybe you would like to bring them down to your heart or perhaps on your hips. But we're really feeling the power of the thighs here. You might really bring your attention to the experience you're having in your sit bones, in your outer thighs, your hamstrings, strongest part of our bodies here. So really feel yourself grounded as you continue to breathe. Maybe you sit down and back a little bit more. One more full breath right here. And then we'll inhale, press into the feet, straighten the legs, reach the arms up towards the sky. Exhale, let your hands float all the way back down towards the ground. And we'll come back to our Tadasana, mountain pose. And just feel if you notice any difference now as compared to your first mountain posture today. Maybe you're a little bit warmer. Maybe your heart is beating a little bit faster. Maybe you feel a little more energy or vitality in your limbs. And then we'll take our hands to the hips and step the feet out just a little bit wider than hip width. You might have a really wide stance here. You could even have your stance be as wide as the length of one of your legs. So it's kind of like a triangle. If you, like me, are nursing a little low back pain, you might have a narrower stance. And we'll just call this our superhero posture. No hyperextending in those knees. So if you're prone to that, make sure you've got a little bend in the knees. And we want the feet to be kind of parallel to one another. Lift the heart, draw the shoulder blades down the back body. Feel yourself strong, powerful, bringing a sense of joy and vitality to your posture, a sense of strength and courage. And then let's inhale to reach the arms out to the sides if that's available to you. And we'll turn the right toes to the right side of the mat to the short edge. This is gonna be our warrior two posture once we bend into that right knee. Now you might wanna take your stance a little wider or a little narrower here, depending on where you are. And you might wanna check back at that back arm to see if your arms are level here. And then we're gonna to turn to gaze out over the front fingertips. And this is our warrior two posture, Vira Bhadrasana two in the Sanskrit. And we embody the characteristics of the warrior here. 
honesty, honor, loyalty, compassion, adaptability, all of the things that a warrior should embody. One more inhale here, and then we'll exhale, bring your right hand to the top of the right thigh and your left hand to the left hip. This is our side body stretch here, side angle pose preparation. Really make sure that your knee is over your ankle and you might gently press into your right thigh here. It could be great to stay here or perhaps you bring your right forearm down to the top of the right thigh. And we're not looking down towards the floor here, but rather we're rotating the belly and the heart towards the sky. And maybe you even look up towards the sky. You could stay here or use your next inhale to reach your left fingertips up towards the sky. Press into that outside edge of your back foot. That'll help to keep the back knee safe. And if you like, you might explore bringing that right arm, or excuse me, left arm alongside the left ear. Getting long from your left fingertips all the way down to the outside edge of that left foot. You can rotate your pinky down towards the ground and notice how that affects your left shoulder blade. One more full cycle of breath here. And then we'll release that left arm down towards the right foot and then bring it back and around and up overhead again, making some circles in this left shoulder. And again, your circles might be very generous or they might be very subtle. And then we'll reverse those circles, three in each direction. And use this last circle's momentum to come all the way back to your warrior two. And then exhale, release the hands. Bring the feet back in underneath your hips and just shake it off. Always be willing to take breaks as, as, as you feel like you want to. Listening to your body, giving yourself an opportunity to check back in with your breath. And just notice here the differences in the two sides of the body. Let yourself be fully in your body. Again, noticing your feet touching the ground, your heart lifting, your spine strong. And then we'll even those two sides out. So let's start once again in our superhero posture strong through the thighs, heart lifted, shoulders back, powerful, purposeful, and fully present. One more full cycle of breath here. And then we'll turn those left toes out to face the short edge of the mat, bend into that left knee, keep the arms down at the hips, or raise up to warrior two arms. Look out over those left fingertips. And rather than looking at the left hand, let your gaze unfocus and look as far in the distance as you can. Might be you're looking at a wall like me, might be a hypothetical distance, but just let your eyes have a little rest here. And you could stay in this warrior two posture or you could bring your left hand to the left thigh, right hand to the right hip. Coming into side angle pose. Breathing here, trying to keep that breath coming down deep into the belly, the low back, the pelvis. And then maybe taking the left forearm to the top of the left thigh. Again, widening or shortening your stance as feels right to you. Look down at the ground, but then rotate your heart, your gaze up towards the sky. Be nice and open here and long in the spine. Stay here or with your next inhale, raise your fingertips up towards the sky. Press into that outside edge of your right foot. 
And if it works for you, you might take this right arm alongside the right ear and turn the pinky down towards the ground. Again, looking up towards your right elbow. My cat is coming in to say hello, so just ignore her there. She will get attended to after class. And then we'll make those rotations in the shoulder. So let those right fingertips come down and back and up and around. Three times in this direction. And then reverse directions, opening up across the heart. And then on this third and final time, use the momentum to bring yourself all the way back to warrior two. Exhale, release the hands, and we'll heel toe those feet back underneath the hips and just shake it off. Very good. And then we'll come to interlace the fingers behind the low back. If they don't quite touch, you could use a belt or a yoga strap if you have one, or even a little hand towel so that you can bring the hands closer together. But if they do interlace, we're gonna interlace those fingers behind the back, draw the heart up, lift the chin up towards the sky, and kind of squeeze your shoulder blades together here as much as feels good to you. Opening up the front of the throat, across the collarbones. One more inhale right here, and then we'll keep the hands where they are, but exhale to tuck the chin in towards the base of the throat. Keeping the shoulder blades coming back towards one another. And the heart lifted. Inhale, your chin level to the earth again, and exhale, release. And just notice what you notice, being here in your body, alive, vital, strong, beautiful. And then we'll bring the hands to the hips once again. And this time we'll bring that right arm forward and turn the palm up towards the sky. Let's sweep the right arm out towards the right, and maybe towards the back of the room a little bit, getting some space across the front of the heart. If it feels okay to you, you might take your left fingertips outside this right shoulder and gently Pull the muscle in towards the collarbone or towards the uh, sternum here at the center. Just getting a little stretch across the front of the shoulder. And then maybe taking your gaze over towards the left. And just feeling what you feel here. Again, not forcing anything, not pushing or pulling, just finding a little bit more space. One more full cycle of breath here. And then we'll inhale the gaze back to center and release the arms. And again, check in with yourself, what's happening in your body? Where are there differences? Where are there similarities? And then we'll take the left hand or right hand to the right hip Reach those left fingertips forward and up, palm facing up. And like you're serving a beautiful tray of hors d'oeuvres, bring that left arm out to the side and maybe draw the thumb back behind you a little bit, opening up in front of the shoulder. Perfectly fine to stay right here. You're still getting a nice opening in the front of the shoulder, the pectoral muscle. But if you like, you can bring your right fingertips just outside of that shoulder joint and draw the muscle in towards the center of the heart. Feeling free to stay here or maybe take your gaze off to the right. Opening up, making space. 
not forcing, just inviting. One more full breath here. And then we'll inhale the arm and gaze back to center. Exhale, release your hands and just give your shoulders a little shake. And then let's come on down to the ground. Any way you want to get there. Um, you could use a chair to get down to the ground. You could fold forward to come to the ground. I'm just going to come on down to my knees here. And we're just going to find a quick tabletop. Bringing your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. You might swim your hips a little bit from side to side like you're shaking your tail. Getting long through that side body again. And then we'll bring the big toes together and take the knees as wide as feels comfortable for you. Maybe even as wide as your yoga mat. Let's bring that right palm right underneath your gaze. And we're gonna take the left fingertips along the inside of the right arm as if you're pulling back the bow of a bow and arrow. Touching your arm, touching your shoulder, your collarbones, reach those left fingertips up towards the sky as much as feels good to you. Inhale, press into your right hand as you reach up with your left hand. And then we're gonna exhale to dive that left arm down underneath the right arm and come all the way down to the mat onto your left shoulder and your left temple. If this doesn't feel good to you, you can always put a yoga block or a book or a thick pillow underneath to bring the earth a little bit closer to you. Otherwise, we're just gonna draw the hips back towards the heels. You can use those right fingertips as a little kickstand, or maybe you wanna extend them out in front of you and just really let yourself sink into that left shoulder. So we opened up the front of the left shoulder. Now we're getting into the back, the hind part, into the shoulder blades. Couple breaths right here. Use your next inhale to press into your right hand, come back to your tabletop, maybe shake things out a little bit if you like, and then we'll switch sides. So plant that left hand right underneath the gaze, take those right fingertips, bring them right down to touch your left wrist, and then we'll draw those fingertips up the inside of the left arm, across the shoulder, across the collarbones, and reach up towards the sky any amount. And the arm just might come out to the side here, or it might come up to the sky or somewhere in between. Just depends on your body and where you are today. Inhale here to press into the left hand, reach up towards the sky with the right, Exhale, dive that right arm down to the floor underneath the left arm and come all the way to your right shoulder, your right temple, coming to rest on your mat or a pillow or a block, whatever serves you today. You can press into the left fingertips or reach the left fingertips long, but just let your weight kind of sink into that right shoulder as much as feels good to you. Draw your hips back towards your heels, get nice and long in the side body. And we'll find a couple more breaths right here. Again, invite that breath down deep into the low belly, the low back, the pelvis. And then with your next inhale, press into the mat with your left hand. Bring both arms underneath the shoulders, parallel your shins and your feet, beats, just the feet. And then let's inhale to draw the heart forward. Let the belly come down and the tailbone come up any amount. 
Exhale, press into your fingertips, draw your belly button up towards your spine and open up space in between your shoulder blades. Couple more rounds of this here. We call this cow posture with the dropped belly and cat posture with the belly button coming up towards the spine. Moving with your breath. We've gotten all of the directions of the spine in today with our side bends, our little twists, and now this front and back posture. And then we're gonna bring the elbows right down to where the hands are and do the same cat and cow motion here. So we'll draw the heart forward and then we'll press into the elbows and round the upper back. It's a much more subtle movement here. And it's a little more targeted in the cervical spine up in the neck and the shoulders. And then we'll step the left toes back, tucking them under, getting that left leg nice and long, pressing into that heel. Getting a nice stretch across the back of the calf, the hamstring. Then we'll bring that left knee back underneath the hip and then step those right toes back tucking the toes under, pressing back towards that right heel, getting long through the whole leg. Keep the chin tucked to keep your neck safe. And then we'll bring that right knee under the hip again. And then we're gonna come down to the belly into Sphinx pose. You can go ahead and come right there, or you can step the left toes back, step the right toes back, and come into a strong forearm plank for two full breaths. Press into your elbows, open up space behind the heart, press your thighs up towards the sky. One more inhale here, and then we'll exhale, release the thighs, untuck the toes, and come into Sphinx Pose. We are up onto our forearms here, drawing the heart forward between the biceps. Press the tops of the feet down towards the earth. And imagine you're wearing a pair of jeans and you wanna really press the zipper and the pubic bone down towards the ground to keep the low back nice and long here counteracting all of the hunching forward we do when we're working at a desk or a computer or driving, just living. <laughs> and we're just getting ourselves those nice, healthy shoulders and spines. One more inhale right here. And then we'll exhale, release down towards the ground, bring the hands under the shoulders, and press all the way up to table, tuck those toes under, send the hips back towards the heels, extended child's pose. Breathe into that low back, breathe into the low belly. And then if you like, you can untuck the toes, bring the big toes together, Take the feet out nice and wide and sink the hips all the way down towards the heels. It might be nice to have a blanket or a pillow underneath the hips here. And it might be nice to have a block or something underneath the forehead. You can keep yourself lifted here. Or if you have the space, you might bring your forehead all the way down to the mat. Let your arms be soft here and breathe into your low back. You can stay here with the arms resting down, or you could bring your palms together, bend your elbows and bring your hands behind your neck, sinking back into the heels and getting a nice stretch along your triceps. Shark fin child's pose.
Three full breaths wherever you are in your version of child's pose. Filling up the low belly, the low back, the side body. And then we'll press into the earth, come all the way back up to your tabletop pose. And then any way you want to get there, we're just going to come to rest on our backs. You want to make this a little core engagement. You can have your knees bent, pointed up towards the sky, feet flat on the floor. Reach your arms out in front of you and find your tall Tadasana spine again, lifting your heart, finding your breath here. If you like, you can pick up your right foot and then set it back down. Pick up the left foot and set it back down. Bring your hands to the backs of the thighs and come back partway or halfway with your upper body. And then again, either stay here with the heart lifted or lift the right foot and set it back down. Keeping strong in your core, lift the left foot and set it back down. If you're using the feet, do that one more time side to side, or maybe you pick up both feet at the same time, boat pose, Navasana. Wherever you are, two more breaths. And then we'll set the feet back down and roll down to the mat, one vertebra at a time. When you reach the bottom, Reach your arms up overhead, stretch your legs out nice and long, wiggle your fingers and your toes. And then we'll find a final Shavasana here, our corpse pose, our rest posture, which is allowing all of the body systems to open and be long, letting the blood and the lymph flow through the body unimpeded. If this is not comfortable for you, you could bend your knees, bring your feet out wide and let the knees rest in on one another. Or you could find supine Baddha Konasana or lying down butterfly pose, bringing the feet together and the knees out wide. So again, everybody is different. What your needs are today are likely different from mine. I'm going to take this feet wide, knees together, what we call constructive rest pose. And then you could have your arms out to the sides, palm facing up in Shavasana arms. Or you could also come to constructive rest in the arms, bringing one hand to the belly and one hand towards your heart. Let your next inhale be the biggest breath you have taken all day, filling up the low back, the low belly, the mid back, the side bodies, the heart, the place behind the heart. Big, big, big in breath. Hold it for just a moment. And then let it go out your mouth with a nice big sigh. Do that two more times, those big cleansing breaths, inhaling through the nose. Open the mouth and let it go. One more time. And come back to breathing your regular breath through your nose. Not trying to control or change anything, but just letting your breath breathe you. With this sense of tenderness for yourself, feel the aliveness and the vitality of your body. And we'll just be here for a moment, letting our practice settle in. 
staying with your breath and your body. And if this is a nice place for you to stay, feel free to stay here as long as your time allows. But if you're ready to wrap up your practice, you might draw one knee and then the other in towards your heart, giving your knees or shins a little bit of a hug here. And then roll to your favorite side and press yourself up to a tall seat. I like to end in Dandasana with my legs extended, toes pointing up towards the sky for a nice balanced finish. But if you want to come into cross-legged position, Sukhasana, feel free to do that. Otherwise, we'll take this nice tall spine once again heart lifted, shoulder blades down the back, base of the skull coming up towards the sky. Let's inhale together, raising the arms up overhead, bringing the palms together, and then exhale to draw your hands right down to meet your heart. And a little loving kindness, you might like to repeat this after me out loud or in your heart. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be well. Namaste.